There are said to be more than five trillion pieces of plastic waste floating in the oceans. Our guest and his colleagues are looking to change that. The ocean cleanup is projecting that it will be able to get rid of 90% of this floating plastic from the oceans by 2040. Uh, they use what they call artificial coastlines, but also garbage filtering technology. We are joined by Aryan Chalama, technology manager at the Ocean Cleanup. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Um, this technology was apparently invented by an 18-year-old in Delft, the Netherlands. Um, just broadly tell us, what technology do you use? How does your system work? Yes, thank you. Good morning. It, it was indeed invented by, by our founder, uh, Boyan Slat, when he, when he was still in high school. Uh, it has evolved quite a bit from then. That was uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, what the technology looks like now is that indeed we create an artificial coastline in the ocean and we tow that uh, through the ocean, uh, through the areas where we know that where the plastics is and where the highest density areas of the plastics are. And then that funnels it into sort of a central collection zone of the of the cleanup system uh, and there it uh, it gathers until we extract it on one of our vessels and then we bring it back to shore what do you do with the plastic when you get it back on shore well we recycle the plastic into uh, durable products so with the first batch we recycled it into sunglasses huh. um, and now with the uh, with the second batches and the larger volumes of plastics we're looking into uh, further recycling projects uh, similar to that but some of the plastic, I presume, cannot be recycled. Well, small parts indeed are, are too poor quality uh, to recycle. Uh, but what we want to do is make the best use of the plastics that we can and uh, recycle uh, as much as, as we can in a responsible way uh, and make sure that it uh, will never enter the environment again after we extracted it. The oceans are so vast, though. How could you cover 90% of them in 20 years? Well, we make use of nature in that sense uh, because we know that the plastics are are gathering in uh, in five areas in the oceans called uh, gyres, mm -hmm. um, and that's where most of the plastics in the oceans is, and where the plastics is also sort of attracted to because of the the currents in the ocean. Still a large area, so we know that the biggest one where we are now in the North Pacific is uh, about uh, three times the size of France. So it's a big area, uh, but by targeting within that area the hotspots, so the, the highest density areas of plastics within there, we can clean it up effectively. And your pay, who pays for all this? Is it just donations? Yes, we, we do rely on donations indeed. So um, yeah, any help we can get from, from philanthropists, from companies, from institutions, that's, uh, that's, that's welcome. And that's where we, uh, where we aim to fund the whole, the whole project with. Has the plastic industry stepped up? Have they given you much money? Uh, the, partly. We're still in, in conversations with a uh, with big part of the plastic industry. Um, so that, that, that requires uh, quite some time to do. But, uh, but partly that happens indeed, yes. My understanding is a lot of the plastic in the oceans comes from uh, lower income nations in the global south that don't have proper garbage systems. And it just floats out on the rivers. Yeah, that's, there's two sides of that. So there's a lot of plastics flowing out of the rivers indeed. And that, that is another project that we have at the ocean cleanup to, to stop that inflow. So to intercept the plastics in the rivers and get it out before it enters the oceans. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we also recently uh, discovered by analyzing the, uh, the plastics that we're taking out of the ocean is that a lot of the plastics that are floating in the middle of the oceans uh, are coming from uh, fishing industry, mm -hmm. uh, aquaculture and shipping. Uh, mainly fishing industry. So that's another sort of source of plastics that's adding to that problem in the uh, in the middle of the oceans. Yeah, I've heard I've heard about that, that the, this fishing gear that goes adrift is a huge problem. That's hard to police, yeah. though, isn't it? Because, uh, well, certain nations are, are going to ignore measures, etc. It's, it's definitely complicated, but there are a lot of initiatives to work on this, luckily. Uh, so we have good hopes that that problem will will decrease rapidly, hopefully in the in the not too long future. Um, but this is also one of the reasons that we believe that cleaning up that plastics that are that are out there and still still being uh, grow growing the amount of plastics out there, uh, why we think that that's so important to do. What's it like working on one of the boats? Are you out there for months, or how how, how does that uh, work? Yeah, the boats do six week trips. So a month and a half almost. Uh, so and there's uh, our partner Mersk is is operating the boats. It's oh. also their boat. 
So that's the crew that's used to working in that way and very experienced working out in the ocean. And uh, that, that's a big help for us, of course, on the project. So you're the technology manager. Tell us about your biggest headache. What has given you sleepless nights? <laughs> yeah, there's many, but it's, uh, uh, it's, it's less now because now we have an actually working system uh, out in, in the ocean. Uh, so now we have uh, collected more than 140,000 kilos of plastic already from this area. Um, so the headaches are a bit less, but, uh, but still there's much to work on. And that's mainly in the sense of doing this as efficient as we can and also uh, reducing the uh, the impact that we have uh, by, by doing this project. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, I mean, there must be some forms of ocean life living near the surface that could be affected here. Yeah, and that's of course what we what we absolutely want to minimize and, and prevent. So we, we have a lot of mitigation measures in place to, to minimize our impact on marine life and to, to prevent us from catching protected species um, uh, mostly. Uh, that's successful so far. We have some interactions with turtles, but we found that the turtles that are close to our system are not in a healthy condition anyway, uh, or deceased already. Uh, but this is a very, very important point of attention to, uh, for us to, to minimize the impact in that sense. I suppose some people might say, well, we'd be better off not putting the plastic in the ocean, but the fact is there's a lot of the stuff out there. Yeah, definitely, and and of course we we are all for for not putting it in there. But uh, since it is there, there mm -hmm. is already a lot, and and well, we know it is still growing. So it's uh, uh, until the point that that people are not putting it in anymore, we think it's essential to to take it out and prevent this from harming the environment. If there are people watching this show who are wondering, can I get involved? Would they hire me? Uh, are you looking for people? Are you looking for particular types of skills? Yeah, definitely. We have uh, we have quite a list of uh, of positions open on our website, theoceancleanup.com. So uh, uh, everybody is welcome to take a look there, and that's for uh, for job positions and uh, other forms of support, uh, donations. That's all welcome, of course, to uh, to help us make this happen. That's amazing. And so I, I, I'm guessing the pay is not huge uh, because you're you're funded by donations. But uh, what you're on board for six weeks. Do you get do you guys fly a person home to their home city, for example, or how does that work? Yeah, that the part of being on on the boats is that's a small part of what we do, and that's mainly the the Maersk crew on the vessels and a couple of our uh, uh, guys and girls out there, and then after their shifts, they of course fly back home. Um, and other than that, there's a lot of us working in 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 our uh, headquarters in the Netherlands or offices uh, around the world. Uh, uh, developing the technology and, and well, doing all the supporting uh, things that we need to make it happen. So you mentioned Maersk, the giant global shipping line. Just So what is their role? They're actually running the ships? Yeah, they are. So they're, they are one of our partners and uh, they own and operate the ships. So in, in cooperation, we, uh, we make sure that the operation of, of the cleanup is, is being performed by them. Um, in the way that we intend it to be and in line with our design and, and plans. Um, oh. And they are also providing a lot of input to that, of course, with their experience. And 